when we first came here in 2007, I thought Vietnamese people would hate us because we were Americans. And the only thing we knew about Vietnam was the Vietnam War, you know. And, and so for us to come here and to see people so open, um, you know, and to not care at all what country we were from, but just to be, you know, wonderful, warm people to us. We've been coming here working in the orphanages, so the children are so beautiful. Chào mừng quý vị đang cùng đến với chương trình Việt Nam trong tim tôi. Ngày hôm nay thì Nguyên Kha muốn mời quý vị chúng ta sẽ cùng gặp gỡ cô Becky McFarland, một học giả về phương Pride và bên cạnh đó là một người đang hoạt động về chuyên ngành công tác xã hội. Hiện cô đang sinh sống tại Mỹ nhưng thường dành thời gian đến Việt Nam để chăm sóc và giúp đỡ cho những người có hoàn cảnh neo đơn, đặc biệt là những người lớn tuổi, những người già. Chúng ta sẽ cùng trò chuyện với cô để tìm hiểu thêm về công việc cô đang làm nhé. Uh, during your um, social activities time, uh, what is the things that you are most concerned, priority concern? Okay, well as a Fulbright scholar we had to pick an area of topic that we're most interested in when we applied to, to become a Fulbright scholar which is based out of the United States. And so because of my previous trips to Vietnam, I was very concerned about the elderly and that's actually my specialty back in America. And so even though we've been here working with the children in the orphanages, my passion is really helping the older people. And so when I chose to, when I got accepted as a Fulbright Scholar, that was my emphasis. And my concern here in Vietnam is that the, peop the population is growing older and the largest, um, the fastest growing age group are those who are over the age of 85. But there's not enough services to help them. And so my goal here is to look at what's currently being provided and hopefully work with some government officials and some students and university folks to have them begin to think about what else are we going to need here in Vietnam to help the older people. Yeah, but why, why the issues of the elderly are the first priority to you? Uh, why are they the most yeah. important? So I've always felt like there's such a great need with older people and people don't understand um, what it's like to grow old and, and don't have the compassion that, that I sometimes feel. But what I love about here in Vietnam is how cherished and treasured the older people are here in this culture. We don't have that in the United States, that idea of respect and the idea that the elders here are the most knowledgeable and the most sacred to the family. And that is such a beautiful cultural aspect of, of Vietnam. And so I'm hoping to learn from that, the culture here, and you know, hopefully go back to the United States and be able to talk about that cultural piece. Uh, uh, during the time you have uh, worked with the mm -hmm. elder, mm -hmm. uh, you have any memories or unforgettable uh, sweet memories right. together with them? Right, I do. One that just happened um, last week. We went to visit um, at a nursing home at the, one of the Buddhist uh, facilities uh -huh. and there was a woman there who probably has some type of dementia, has some memory loss, but she still remembered her songs. And when I sat down beside her, she started doing her song and singing and she knew every word to the song. And to me, that's just, um, that was such a treasured moment um, that I could sit there and sing with her and, li and sing along. And, and, and you know, that's a, a memory that I'll, that I'll keep with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, love, I love those kind of moments, yeah. Yeah, so how, how do you think about the the, 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 uh, the issues of taking care of the elder in Vietnam. The family is the place that, fam that older people want to be taken care of, but my concern is how to support those caregivers. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if I can provide support to a caregiver so that they can still go to work mm -hmm. and have someone help during the day, I think that's an important aspect. Um, the other thing that I'm doing here, which has been really exciting, is I'm working with some of the doctors related to Alzheimer's disease because there isn't a lot of people who are diagnosed here. They, um, they don't have a total understanding about Alzheimer's disease. And so I'm working with some doctors to begin to look at the number of patients that come into a hospital that actually have dementia or Alzheimer's but um, aren't diagnosed and so their families don't know 
how to handle their care. And so we want to work with the doctors, teach them more about diagnosing, but also help the families understand how to handle the behaviors. And when I say the behaviors, an example would be if you have someone who um, likes to wander, and so they're going to try to go out on the street, and we have to work with the family to show them how to, how to make that safe so that you know someone isn't confused and they're out on the sidewalk and maybe will get hit by a car or a motorbike or something. So we want to make sure the families can be educated as caregivers. And so I'm really trying to help with that project. Yeah. As Vietnam becomes more of a developed country, um, the needs are going to get greater. And like an example, um, people used to stay within their own villages and so it was easy to take care of parents or grandparents but now as young people are getting more educated and they're moving to another country or they're moving to other parts of Vietnam, they're not going to be as um, available to take care of the older relatives as they used to. And so I think it's important that Vietnamese um, government and, and begins to think about what they can do um, to add services here. Well, but how is this? Uh important to you? Oh, how, how is this it meaningful important? to oh, you? Okay, how is it meaningful to me? Um, I am really hoping that I can have an influence on those changes. Um, I've worked in aging services for 30 years in the United States and I would really like to feel like some of my experiences can be transferred over here so that I can begin to tell them about some of the other options that they have available to them. Mm -hmm. So what is the uh things that you satisfy about yourself uh, during the time you work for the social activity. I'm sorry, what are the things? I mean, is that what is the something like the achievement of yourself oh, my that achieve, you get? My achievement. Yeah. Um, I, right now, I'm teaching an aging class here at the university, um, Vietnam National University, and uh, my achievement is hopefully I'm going to um, give some passion to those students uh -huh. uh, to work with to work with the elderly uh -huh. you know so I want to I want to help more teach more social workers to work with the elderly yeah. and to to realize what a wonderful population that is to help yeah we should have the next generations yes. that have you exactly. to do it and expand it more exactly so I want to convince them that it's it's a good place a good thing to do yeah, yeah. so I know that you will have the next uh, class uh, yes. to uh, talk with the student. Exactly. We will you talk about how to transfer the uh, the way to do uh, the social activities. I am trying to really share stories with them so that they can see the impact that they can have um, on elderly people. Thực ra thì tôi cảm thấy tương đối là may mắn vì có cơ hội làm việc với giáo sư Vicky tại vì cô là một người có cái kiến thức chuyên ngành rất là sâu và rộng. À, đồng thời cô cũng à, có một cái niềm đam mê rất là lớn với lĩnh vực công tác xã hội với người già và cô rất là quan tâm tới lĩnh vực này tại Việt Nam và cô cũng đồng thời truyền cái à, niềm đam mê đó cho các bạn sinh viên cũng như là tôi. Thank you very much uh, for sharing with me and Miss Becky about your love, your passion in Vietnam with your charity work. Before we finish the show, may you say something together with me? Hi, cùng tôi yêu Việt, Việt, Việt Nam. Nam. Thank you very much oh, for coming welcome. in. Thank Hope that you. we have a lot of chance to meet you in Vietnam also. Uh, next more year. Okay. okay. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, we also have a small souvenir for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh. Because your husband is always way together with you. Oh, so I would choose the picture to remind oh. us about the show. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Thank you I, I so much. I forget to our show. Yes, yeah. thank you. I'll treasure that forever. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Quý vị thân mến, chúng ta vừa đến với cuộc trò chuyện cùng với cô Becky và qua cuộc trò chuyện này thì quý vị cũng thấy được tình cảm của cô đã dành cho Việt Nam không chỉ là giúp đỡ cho những trẻ em nhỏ mà còn cả những người lớn tuổi bằng cách là cô đã mang đến niềm vui cũng như là những sự chăm sóc, sự quan tâm cho họ. Cảm ơn quý vị đã theo dõi chương trình này. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại với những nhân vật lần sau.